in the whip and I'm whipping the soul out of it. Chin the tone when I'm fessing like Pilates. Why you front? You act like you somebody. Keep a trail in the veil, how I go by it. I was stuck in the rut, I was nobody. I've been looking for something to go body. There's an art to the hustle, like yo, got it. Kid got a kid back and hit like a new shot. In the whip and I'm whipping the soul out of it. Chin the tone when I'm. Yo, it's good time clown. It is your boy King Tyne X here back with another video and as you can see from the title and the thumbnail We're going to be doing the next part of the Red Lantern. We're going to do the next part of What if Deku was, red, was a Red Lantern? Now when we last left off Deku had basically demolished the um, entrance exam he was not holding anything back. He, it was basically, how should I say it? It was basically like a kid in a candy store for Deku. It was basically like he was playing with some action figures when it came on to the entrance. When it came on to the entrance exam, he was holding um. An All Might action figure and um, the other thing he was holding was well a robot a robot That was probably like seven stories tall or something <laughs> But we're not even going to get into that We just need to establish that he was basically able to demolish the entrance exam Now when it came on to entering UA Deku had already felt that he had this in the bag he felt that he he was basically a shooting for UA and sure enough he was he would arrive at UA after he got his letter of course after like those couple of days um, couple of weeks and when he when he first arrives at UA he doesn't actually fly this time no he actually rides the bus there albeit in his more human form when he sees the door for class 1a he is actually surprised at the size he would assume that well there would probably be like a bunch of giants or something at ua and that's probably why they would have decided to make the door so well large I mean, granted, there are people who were like eight feet tall within, like, um, the world of My Hero Academia, such as, well, Black Gum. So, Deku was thinking along those sort of lines. He would hear the yelling of Bakugo and Ida as soon as he walked in through the door, and he was quickly annoyed by the interaction between these two. Ida would stop talking to Bakugo and actually turn around when when he hears footsteps he notices that the person who had just entered through the door was Azuku. He actually ended up rushing over to Azuku and bowed before him saying that he was the much better candidate in his opinion for Yue at the very least. He said that he was much smarter than him when it came on to knowing the hidden me the hidden meaning behind the exam he admitted to being cowardly when it came on to facing the zero pointer he thought that it would just be a waste of time but apparently azuku was able to find that no there were actually points hidden behind this robot it was only to see to seek out who was the most bold and clearly Azuku was much much bolder than Ido ever was. Azuku would just look at him awkwardly before saying Sure. <laughs> Azuku decided to keep the whole thing about just wanting to fight the robot thing a secret because he admitted that he did like to praise a little bit. Then he would look over to Bakugo. Bakugo and Izuku would look at each other before glaring. They would glare at each other very, very intensely, honestly. Well, until Uraraka showed up. She actually tapped Izuku's shoulder, which disrupted the 
the intensity of the situation. It was very, the air was very tense. The air was thick with intensity right now. Intensity. When she did end up thanking him for saving her from the robot, she had a bright smile on her face. She had these rosy cheeks. He just wanted to pinch them or something along those lines. She was just so bright. And it kind of hurt him honestly because she just seemed too pure for him. But Aizawa would end up appearing behind both of them. Saying that if they were here to make friends, they should actually leave. That's something that you would probably want to just do at McDonald's or something. This is class 1A, a hero course class. It's here that you are meant to simply put, train to become heroes. This is not a place to have fun. If you want to have fun, then you can leave. There's no point in you being in this class. He told everyone to get changed and, and he told everyone to get changed into some sort of gym clothes and it would lead to do the apprehension exam. Since Suzuku got first place in the entrance exam, he would be the first one to throw the ball. Uh, Zuku would create a construct of a rocket launcher and stuff the ball inside before launching it. He would get a score of 900 meters in press in the class, especially people like Momo because this interested her seeing as somebody had a quirk that seemed kind of similar to hers in where they could create objects. Although she didn't know the full mechanics behind his quirk, or at least she assumed it was his quirk. But people like Bakugo, well, only Bakugo, he would be angered by this sort of revelation that it seemed that Izuku seemed to have a quirk now. He would assume that Izuku actually was lying about not having a quake for all of these years and actually try to uh, attack him but it doesn't really go well. Aizawa would quickly put a stop to that by saying, by saying this, if anybody were to get last place, he would expel them. This would put fear in everybody's eyes. They're like, wait, what? Bakugo, Bakugo, Bakugo would actually take a step back and not even attempt to really even fight Deku now because of what he just said. He wasn't interested in losing his position. He, it was already bad enough that he didn't get first place on the entrance exam and he lost to Deku of all people. But now he's hearing that you could get expelled if you got last place. He doubted that he would ever get last place though, but he had the feeling that if we tried to attack Azuku now, it wouldn't be so pretty for him either. For most of the tests, Azuku actually outdoes most of his classmates. With the dash, he dash, he made it to the other side in just about a second. Which irritated Bakugo because it took him 3 seconds more in order to get to the finish. And this also shocks Ida because of the fact that he thought he would have had the edge in this sort of competition. But no, Deku was apparently even faster than him which is interesting. Side to, jump, side to side jump, he's in the middle of the class. Grip strength, he created a large hand, crushing the device, giving him a maxed out score of like 999 kilograms. The long jump, he would just fly over the sand, bug, the sand box, well, just very casually. Most of the other exercises, most of the other exercises he and the others do fairly average and besides the ball throw. The only one to really surpass Deku in the ball throw was 
Oshako, and that was because of the nature of it quick being able to make things um, zero gravity ha lose like that pull that gravity has on them. Bakugo is left steaming in range at the fact that Deku beat him and everything and literally just says, you know what? Forget it. Forget what this teacher says. I'm going to fight him. So he would do exactly that. Izuku would actually feed off of Bakugo. Ba he would actually feed off of Bakugo's rage though. Bakugo would try to make a move and fight Deku, but the boy quickly quickly restrained him in one of his constructs. Uh, imagine a straight jacket, but red. Overall, overall though, Izuku was left kind of disappointed that he wasn't able to find any candidates for his Red Lantern Corps, and wondered what tomorrow would what tomorrow would entail. The only interesting event though. For tomorrow, well, the next day was well when All Might appeared in the class, informing the students about combat training. This now, this interested everyone, especially Azuko and Makako, hearing the words combat training. When student, when suiting up in their costumes, most of the guys were asking about Azuku's costume since he didn't really bring a briefcase like everybody else. But Azuku would say that there is no need as he reveals his other form, red suit and all. Most of them are in awe seeing this, commenting on how he looks so different, and the suit looks almost looks almost as if it's a second layer of skin. Bakugo would just snarl, saying it isn't that great, but everyone would just ignore him. Izuku would get even more attention when he left the changing rooms. All Might would actually stare at Izuku because he would recognize this different form that he has taken up. But he decides to just let things go for right now. He decided that it would be better to not confront it right now. All Might would begin explaining the exercise in more detail and draw lots. Azuku and, Ch and Del Chaco were paired together as a team against Bakugo, against Bakugo and Ida. Azuku would have Uraraka leave in order in order for him to fight Bakugo, Bakugo while she would find the bomb. He figured out Bakugo would definitely try to attack him, especially after yesterday's events. Ochako would agree with this method and she would leave searching for Ida and the bomb. Bakugo would find Azuku and they would begin their battle, but Bakugo, he quickly realized that he'd bitten off more than he could chew, than he could chew. He realized that, oh, oh snap, wait a minute, no, this isn't how things are supposed to go. Zuku was just too strong for Bakugo right now, as each of his punches felt like bricks being thrown at him. Bakugo was left unconscious by Zuku as the boy would throw him to the other side of the room and have caption tape wrap around him. Well, wrap around his arm. Azuku would fly up through the windows and find Ida running around with the bomb. Azuku would just shake his head at this almost hilarious scene. It's as if they were playing cat and mouse right now. Azuku would just use his ring to create a bubble in case an object securing their victory. Well, Ida would see this and would just be in bewilderment. He's like, when did he get here? And he beat himself up about not about not remembering that Azuku, Azuku could really fly, especially after the events of yesterday. Although he assumed that it was more so hovering than really flying yesterday. Now he sees that no, he can really, really fly all the way, not just just hover off the ground or anything. 
Students are left intimidated by Zuko after his display of strength against Bakugo, but he also, but they also kind of cheer for Zuko, saying that he is very, very strong. All Might would, reprima would reprimand Zuko for going too far at Bakugo, though. Azuku doesn't care because after everything that Bakugo did to him, this was just lightweight. Sure, he made Bakugo bleed. Sure, he, sure he brought him to an unconscious state. He beat him up that badly. Sure, he has a black eye, some bruises from here and there. But that's that's lightweight. That, that's nothing compared to the torment the torment he went through for like um a decade of his life. Zuku would watch the rest of the students of the students as they would display their talents and a couple actually would catch his attention. The first was Shoto Todoroki who actually froze a building, securing their victory from the get-go. Powerful quirk. And his rage was that of a cold fire, you could say. The second was Tokuyami, who possessed a unique sentient quirk but it felt like he was restraining his negative emotions interesting he would have to look into this one a bit more he would save Todoroki for later but this guy this guy was like two in one so he was going to try and and get and get this negative get these negative emotions out of him really try to push towards him releasing them really release the restraints so that he could fully take the red lantern ring now all the rest of the fights for go pretty similar similar to in canon and that's pretty much it for this part of of the arc the next thing that would probably happen is when it comes on to electing class rep of course, Aizawa would just say that they need to perform something incredibly important. Now, most of the class would start to tense up, believing that they would be going through another one of those apprehension exams where somebody would be threatened with expulsion. Which, by the way, um, Manetta was actually expelled from UA since he ended up getting last place so so the students they take the they take any of Aizawa's threats very very seriously here but Aizawa just uh, quickly disarms the um, tension in the room explaining that well they need to elect a class rep Everybody would uh, pretty much just cheer thinking that this would be exciting <laughs> and everybody would just be raising their hands saying that they should be class rep for this and that reason. Aizawa would get sick of the noise and use his quirk to settle, settle them all down. I mean after all his quirk, the way that he is able to activate his quirk is quite intimidating. But in the end, Ida ends up getting class rep. The reason for it not being Zuku here is because of the fact that some of the students they were intimidated by they were intimidated by Zuku and well they wanted nothing to do with him. They didn't want him to be class rep in fear of him being just too strong of a person and they think that he would go into a more they'll go into more of a dictatorship role so they decided that either would be a better choice since he seems to also be on the more diligent side anyways that's basically it i would say that momo is still also elected assistant class rep or like vice president Whatever the whatever that name was, when it comes on to on to lunch though, Ezuku would actually not sit by um, Ida and Uraraki here. No, instead, what ends up happening is that while well, yes, he does get his cat on, 
because that is his favorite meal. He ends up deciding to sit by, by Tokoyami, who in this one is just by like himself and Suyu. He's by himself and Suyu. Suyu is actually seen by Tokoyami because she she doesn't really care for his very um, brooding attitude, his edgy attitude, you could say. Um, and well, it's basically it's basically the same for Zuku. He would actually begin to bond with Tokoyami. All three of them would actually begin to bond here. Tokoyami's edginess didn't really. Um, but Zuka never deterred him from his path. He know he knew what he wanted, and he knew that he was going to get it. But then the alarm would go off, and many of the students would actually start to run in fear, thinking that there were villains on campus or something along those lines. They knew that something was wrong. Especially the third year students, they had never heard of the alarm going off up until then. So there was definitely something wrong. The students would scatter per usual when they heard about the security breach and Izuku would actually fly to the ceiling in order to escape the crowd while Ida was left to fend for himself and actually calm down the rest of the, stu of the students securing his position as class rep. After everything is taken care of, the next prominent thing would be the bus ride to USJ. While they were riding on the bus, um, Suyu would actually ask Kazuku about this quake. This would actually gather the attention of a couple of others, a couple of other students who were also curious about Azuku's quake. After all, he never really explained what it could do. Like, they've seen him be able to fly, make light con constructs that aren't just holograms or anything. They had weight to them. They'd seen what he could do with those constructs. So they were curious as to just how his quirk worked. I say quirk in quotations. Anyways, uh, Zuku would only see the basics, being that he can empower himself through certain emotions. He didn't mention what exact emotions, and when it came on to the empowerment part, he mentioned that yeah, he can do a multitude of things with these emotions when he says empower himself. Basically, he explained that, yeah, he can make these light constructs, although they take some focus. He can also fly, and there's some other things that he'd rather keep a surprise for later on. He didn't want to give out all his cards so soon. The students would get kind of disappointed knowing that Uzuku was holding back information from them but before they could pry any more information out of him they would arrive at the USJ. 13 would begin explaining the purpose of the training until Kirishima pointed out that there was something off. They would actually turn around and see actual villains pop out of the sort of black and purple portal. Kirishima at first thought that these were some sort of actors, some sort of prop villains you could say. He thought that this was just part of the training and that the USJ really had it all. But Aizawa would tell everybody to stand back since no, these were actually real villains. This notion actually caused many of the students to have their blood run cold. There there was no way, no, there was no way that these could be real villains, but sure enough, they would actually start to attack the students. There was even one villain just popping out of the portal, 
who even declared that they were going to just destroy the USJ. Show that they were not once to be well show that they were to be reckoned with. They were not to be taken lightly and that UA would have would have to lose its reputation. They would have to suffer great casualties today. Uh, Zuku refused to have that happen though. He would actually not listen to Aizawa and he would actually end up shooting down a couple of the villains. Aizawa would actually would actually Aizawa would yell at Izuku for killing some of these guys, but he'd deal with the boy later. He figured that while yes, it was bad that Izuku killed some people at the same time, well it was out of an act of self-defense, so we couldn't be too hard on the kid. Kirigori would manage to actually teleport most of his tombs away. This would include, well, Izuku and Bakugo and Kirishima. With Bakugo and Kirishima, they had actually refused to get behind 13 as well when they had tried to escape into a higher part of the USJ. So, well, when Kirigori ended up teleporting over to where 13 was, they had tried to use the quick black hole on Kirigori in order to suck them up in that hole, but well, Bakugo and Kirishima, they would try to fight Kirigori. They, they would end up jeopardizing the whole purpose of when they would end up jeopardizing all of 13's plan, which would cause Kirigori to have a chance to teleport those two away as well. When it came on to when it, where Zuko was teleported, he would actually be teleported to the flood zone. But his anger would actually start to boil the water. He, this was anger and frustration because of the fact that he knew he could probably do more if he was on the other side. Zuko would quickly fly out to the water and drop onto the boat before shooting down the present villains. Suyu would just be sitting on would just be standing on the boat looking at Izuku in shock and fear at just how quickly he went about well killing these villains. He, like sure he knew that they were villains and all, but that didn't take away from the fact that they were also people as well. So to have him be so readily easy to to just end these guys, that kind of unnerved her. She was left in a state of. I've already described it, but she was left in a state of shock and fear from that and just how Izuku would display his power. And she was already kind of intimidated of Izuku from beforehand when she saw his battle trial against Bakugo but this was on another was on another level Izuku would leave and go around the USJ he would try to help others take down this set of villains as well trying to lower down any sort of casualties many were shocked when they saw Izuku kill though I mean can you really blame them with everything that was going on, just seeing when their classmates show absolutely no mercy against these villains, not even giving them a chance. That really, really kind of set some of them off. Then a scream was heard on the other side of the, on the other side of the USJ, which would cause Azuku to become a bit alarmed. He would look around trying to find the source of the scream as the voice sounded all too familiar. He didn't want to believe it, but it was it happened. He, he really didn't want to believe it. He refused to believe it at first. He refused to believe it until he saw it with his own eyes. But when he did end up going over to the flood zone once again, he saw that Suyu was basically 
having her face being disintegrated by Shigaraki, or a decay, you could say. This brought anger to Azuku's, well, this brought anger to Azuku's face, this brought anger to his heart, this just fueled him with even more rage than usual. He was brought to a much higher degree as he would see Suyu basically in pain, she was crying out for help. So Azuku would rush at Shigaraki, trying to get him off of her, but the Nomu would actually take Shigaraki's place. Shigaraki would get some distance away from Azuku, not necessarily knowing all that Azuku could do. The Nomu would try to punch Azuku, but Azuku would just end up grabbing the, grabbing the attack with one of, his, one of his light constructs and fling the Nomu away before, before going over to them. He would fly over to the Nomu and actually cover the Nomu in plasma. He would look over the Shigaraki and hiss at him, especially after he would actually hit San Shigaraki not just for not just for bringing all of these other villains here to to the USJ, but what he did to Suyu. Sure, he wasn't necessarily all that close with Suyu, but he could actually feel a sort of friendship become. Uh, he could actually feel a sort of friendship beginning to blossom with her. So to see him just just critically injure her. This is what really set Izuku off. But Shigaraki would just be laughing like a madman. He thought that Izuku ended up coughing up a bunch of blood just now, thinking that he maybe overused his Quaker that the Nomu was just that strong. But that laugh would quickly stop as and as he would hear the Nomu scream scream and pain as the uh, blood was beginning to burn at their body faster than they could regenerate. Shigaraki would look over to see what was wrong. They couldn't believe their eyes, especially when Izuku created a blade construct and sliced down on the Nomu. Izuku uh, was able to defeat the Nomu just like that. When All Might arrived, he was also enraged Seeing the villains within the within the vicinity, within the vicinity, although most were already taken care of, courtesy of Bazuku, All Might would deal with the rest of the villains and manage to subdue Shigaraki too. Although several other heroes arrived, Kirigiri was Kirigiri was still able to escape, albeit without Shigaraki this time around. Suyu was left in a coma from Shigaraki's attack. It would have been much more detrimental if Azuku hadn't stepped in when he did. If Shigaraki had just laid his hand on her face for a minute longer, she probably would have been dead. That's, uh, that's at least what a doctor would say, but Azuku and Tokuyami were still in range and they would kind of beat themselves up over this thinking that if only they were there for her before if only Izuku had just stayed put if only just if only that's basically everything that would be going through their heads if only I was there if only if only I was there if only if only he didn't touch her if only it's just um, a mix of emotions right now. Tokuyami, Tokuyami wasn't necessarily upset at Izuku because he knew that Izuku had the right intentions. He was trying to save every, everybody at the USJ. He knew that Izuku was a good guy at heart, but that's when things would have to, to stop. I say stop because of the fact that Tokuyami wouldn't still be angry. He's not angry at Izuku, no. No, his rage was directed towards Shigaraki. 
speaking of this one was actually held in solitary confinement Azuko and Tokiyami wanted to see him though they wanted to actually fight this man show him show him a piece of well give him his own medicine show him a piece of their pain but All Might would actually walk over to Azuku and grab his shoulder saying that they needed to talk. All Might would bring Azuku over to his office and they would explain that he actually recognized Deku from the sludge villain, sludge villain incident which caused Azuku's eyes to widen. He actually forgot, he actually forgot about the sludge villain incident. All those months ago, he'd been so busy trying to learn how to use his powers, getting into UA and all that, that it kind of just slipped his mind. So, he would try to apologize to All Might about what happened back there. And All Might would just try to figure out why he acted like that. Because it was just very unusual. He fought like a wild animal back there. Even trying to attack All Might himself. But when it came on to the battle trial, when it came on to the battle trial at the very least, he was less wild and he could actually understand what he was saying. He could actually comprehend Azuku. It wasn't that he was just speaking gibberish or anything, he wasn't talking like a wild animal back there. So All Might wanted an explanation for why Deku behaved so oddly so oddly during their first interaction. Deku would just explain that it was his first time when locking his quirk, and he was overwhelmed by an abundant amount of an, an abundant amount of rage. Rage towards the, the sludge villain at the very least, but once he was able to take him down, he he couldn't really control much more of his anger and this was a mix of just anger and a sheer will to live so he wasn't thinking too straight back there anybody that was close to his proximity he saw as a threat at the time so of course he would try to attack all might as well not necessarily realizing what he was doing in the act this was Azuku's explanation all Might would accept the explanation. All Might would accept this ex explanation and say that he should, well, at the very least, still try to get his emotions in check. Izuku would nod, mentioning how he does also want to, well, end Shigaraki for what he did to sue you. Of course, All Might would tell him to get rid of those emotions too. Izuku would say that he'll try, but it'll be very, very difficult. The Spirit Festival would come along and Shoto would tell Deku that he would actually defeat him only using his ice side. Izuku would laugh and mock Todoroki for underestimating him, especially with what he's been shown capable of doing so far. This would actually anger Todoroki, but Kirishima, Kirishima were trying to defuse the situation, especially when Bakugo butts in. Class 1A would be called outside with the rest of the classes. Class 1B, C, D, etc. <laughs> Deck would actually be the one to, and to make the speech. He would be the one brought up to the podium. And he would say for everybody to give into their desires, give into your desires to win, give everything that you've got here, okay? Because if you don't, if you're trying to just and give her half of what you got, he would actually look over the Todoroki and glare a little bit, they'll drown. They'll drown in the competition. He would reflect on how a crowd tried to actually bash 1A, believing that they 
thought they were the stuff after fighting villains at the USJ. Uh, Zuku would tighten his fists as the crowd would have a mixed reaction with some cheering and others yelling. Zuku would just keep on remembering all that the people were saying, saying that, oh, Class 1A isn't all that. Class 1A is just filled with a bunch of narcissists. They think that they're the best of the best just because they fought some some measly villains at the USJ. But they didn't necessarily even mention the fact that one of the classmates was critically injured back there and many of them could have actually died. This was just all going through Azuku's head. That's what was feeling his what that's what was feeling his anger right now. Feeling his rage. So when they came on to the beginning of the obstacle course, he would actually fly up and zoom past everyone while destroying all the robots in his path, trying to relieve this anger of his. Trying to just calm 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 himself down while going through and going through the surplus of rage. The this would result in him getting first place. Cavalry battle, he has the same team, but he would actually just create a bubble of red energy protecting them for most of the battle and he would create spikes for extra defense. Tokuyami, he would use Dark Shadow to stretch out from the bubble and grab other, he other headbands. Bakugo and Todoroki, they would try to break the bubble but to no avail. Deku would get first place once again. The people who do make it into the next round are all the same as in canon. The last part of the sports festival would end up being the tournament. And when it first began, it would originally start with Azuku versus, versus Shinso. Here, Deku doesn't really give Shinso a chance to even really speak. Not even give a chance for him to open up, to open up his mouth, not even for a second. Instead, as soon as, as soon as they were allowed to fight, Deku would end up creating a red construct of energy formed into a fist, which he would use to actually knock out Shinso from the ring. This would obviously disappoint Shinso because of the fact that he wasn't really able to show much of his capabilities here. So, the next fight though would end up being Azuku versus Todoroki. When it came on to Todoroki, he would actually force the boy to use his fire side as he would either end up destroying or melting his ice multiple times over to the point where he would even be in a state of frostbite you could say. While he was in this frostbite, frostbite state, he would completely force Todoroki to use his left side. This time, it wasn't out to the fact that he was just remembering his past or anything, but more so out of pure frustration and anger. Unfortunately, Todoroki would still lose to Azuku. When he came on to Azuku's fight against, Bak against Bakugo, he would fight him too brutally to the point where he would actually. Well, Azuku would honestly fight. Izuku would find Bakugo extremely brutal and when I say this I'm talking about to the point where the boy would actually start to bleed he would actually pierce through some of his some of his limbs and he would actually end up breaking Bakugo's legs in the process the referee the referee would the referee would actually end up stopping the match and disqualify Izuku at that point Mbakugo was incapable of movement, but Izuku was trying to go even further, trying to really, uh, trying to really bring, 
bring home just how um, weak Bakugo, Bakugo was to Izuku. Of course, when Deku is disqualified, he doesn't really care. Even when he is suspended afterwards, he doesn't really care. Azama would actually have Izuku attend school though, you know, just so that he could end up talking to the boy, try and figure out why he acted in such a manner. Izuku would go on to explain that he had a very, very strange relationship with Bakugo. He would explain the fact that Bakugo was basically his bully for the last 10 years of his life. He was just giving Bakugo um, some sort of payback. 10 years of torment and this boy seemed to have just gotten away scot-free. He didn't see that as fair so that's why he had gone so hard on Bakugo. If it weren't for those years of torment, he probably wouldn't have even given him much of a thought. He would have probably he would have probably just treated him like any other person when he came on to the tournament. Azawa would hear this and he would understand where Azuku was coming from. He decided to take off some of his time being suspended. He would even write that to Nezu. Nezu would accept this. Uh, of course, Azuku would be able to make it in time for hero intern internships and his hero name. Everybody would share their hero names and Azuku has an interesting hero name here. He would actually go with the name Atrocitus. Atrocitus. The reason for this being that it it just came to him. It just practically called out for him to choose. He didn't know the origins behind it. Well, he kind of did, but he didn't really know the name of the original Red Lanterns. He just knew their history and this Atrocitus, this name Atrocitus, it just came to him. It just felt right in his head. Of course some students were thinking that sounded more like a villainous name but Midnight would allow it. Azuku would look through all of the heroes that requested him. He would have had he would have had a lot more if it weren't for his fight against Bakugo. But he still had a pretty decent amount. A couple of heroes did catch his eye though. These two would end up being Endeavor and Hawks. He would really consider which one would be more interesting to go with. Eventually he just decided to go with Hawks after all. He was a younger pro hero and at the same time he was the youngest hero to have reached such a high position. So we figured that he would be a good person to intern under to try and get some work, work experience from after after all, plus with him being closer to his age, they could probably see more eye to eye. What surprised him, but he didn't know why it surprised him, was that Tokuyami was also interning with with Hawks. I'm probably not using that word correctly when I say interning. But that's basically the best I can use for right, for right now. I don't know how to really describe it. It's not it's not necessarily I'm saying that they're going to like that full on internship. It's only a week. It's only it's only like a week of training. During this week, though, Tokuyami would be struggling. He would he would be struggling to really keep up with the rest, though. He would be struggling to keep up with Hawks and Izuku. 
Azuku would notice that Tokuyami was lagging behind and he would actually approach him about this. He would actually tell him to use his rage, use his rage in a different sort of manner. Use his rage in order to push further. Remember what Shigaraki did to sue you after all. He, doesn't he want to make sure that nobody else has to suffer that fate? Tokuyami would remember this, remember that painful memory, that blood curdling scream of hers and the condition she was in now. Even now she was still in a coma and Tokuyami would obviously grow angry. He would ball up his fists, he would ball his, he would ball his fists and start to really tighten them and say that yes there is absolutely no way that I will allow this to happen again there's no way that I'm going to just stand by and let you guys get ahead of me so far ahead like that and this is what really ended up pushing Tokuyami throughout the whole internship I'm sure he still struggled but not as much as he was originally. Even Hawks would would acknowledge that Tokuyami was starting to make strides. Unfortunately, either would die here because of the fact that neither Izuku or Todoroki were there to help him against Stain. Stain would still be on the loose as well. When Tokuyami first 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 found out about this, he was livid. He wanted to fight Stain as well. Now he wanted to give him, um, he wanted he wanted to give him a piece of his mind. If you get my drift, Azuku wouldn't try to hold back um, Tokiyami, but instead he would actually give Tokiyami a red ring, a crimson ring. <clears throat> You want to kill Stain? Me too. Honestly, I really want to, I really, really want to end this guy, especially after what when this happened to but and your condition your current condition, you let's face it, you, you wouldn't be strong enough. Look, I, I know a way that you could become stronger and at a much faster rate than you are right now. Here, take this ring and put it on. Put it on one of your fingers, it doesn't really matter. It will give you power beyond, power beyond your wildest dreams, but you probably won't be able to continue attending UA after this. So really, it's your call. Tokiyami would look at Izuku and look at the ring before, before taking it, putting it in his hand, just staring at it again before he would sigh. Look, if it means I can wrap my hands around this guy's throat and see him suffer, I don't care about the consequences. Look, I'll, I'll take it, and this better not be a joke either. A flash of red light, as a flash of red light would appear, and Doug's shadow would actually start to envelop Tokuyami in an armor like state. I imagine Tokuyami's Black Abyss super move, but when it came on to his suit, it wasn't it wasn't his hero suit here known. Instead, it was primarily it was a primarily black skin tight suit with a red outlining and the red lantern symbol. Although although there was a red cloak as well. The UA I forgot to mention this, but UA actually became a dormitory after Ida's death as a way to protect his students. Unfortunately, 
I need to stop saying unfortunately. Let's use a different word here. Let's go with this. Tokuyami and Zuku, they would actually end up leaving UA. They would actually end up sneaking out of the building and just fly away right afterwards. That's what ended, that's what ended up happening. Somebody was watching them though. This somebody was watching them and this person was well we'll find out next time. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much all I have right now. These two are in range right now. They are being fueled by pure another rage. There is nothing to really quench it until they can get their hands on both Shigaraki and Stain. But it's going to take a while for them to really find them for right now. But I think you guys can guess in the comments who are going to be the next Red Lanterns. But just in case, um, let's see. Actually, I have no incentive. You guys just tell me who you think are going to be the next Red Lanterns besides like the third. All right, so yeah. Basically, just say this. We already know that Tokiyami is now Red Lantern, but after him, who's going to be, who are going to be the next Red Lanterns after Tokiyami and Azuku? Let's figure that out in the comments. Comment down below who you think. King Tai next. Out. Remember, remember, remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. My channel is dying.